<laughs> Welcome to Utah Video. One of the fun things that I like about my day, maybe not your day, but in my day, I like the way that God meets me where I'm at, doing what I choose to do in order to live my life out pleasing in His sight. Some days when I wake up, it's beautiful, warm, sunny day, and it's gorgeous, and the sun comes up over the Wasatch Mountains, and you think, ah, summer or spring. <laughs> and some days you wake up and you go outside and you go, cold, so you put on a coat. Some days you have, like today, oh, you know, a little bit of problems with the camera, so you kind of go, well, what's up with that? <laughs> so you let it go and you adapt and you change and you use something else instead. Yesterday, for instance, there was a, a power company going around and they were making changes to the way that you use power. They were putting on adapters so that should the power surge come at a certain time, the company could take the load off of the, oh, I can't think of what it's called right now, to take the load off of the network, so to speak, and oscillate it by every 15 minutes having the power surge back on and surge off, kind of like a smart thermometer, so that you don't use, at peak times, all this power surge, like this instant up, you know, giant demand for power and cause, you know, overloads for the power company to provide. And it, likewise, if you keep it even keel, then it doesn't cause circuits to overload. Kind of like what you should be doing in life. When things don't go your way, you know, things don't happen the way you think they should, or it breaks your routine, don't overload your circuit by getting all wound up. Change your way of looking at it. It's an opportunity. And I see every day as an opportunity to see God in it. You see, how you approach your day is going to determine how the day turns out. If you start your day with God, you know, people say, then you'll go with God all day long. Love Him in the morning when you see the sun rising. Or because God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good, then you know that God is in it. That God is is doing what he's doing and he's accomplishing what he's accomplishing. You may not know what that is, but hey, he's God, you're not. <laughs> Isn't that nice to know that you're not God? Neither am I. Woohoo! So I can look at the day completely different than most people. I can look at it knowing that God is in control. I can have confidence. I can have hope. I can have peace. I can have an even keel because even though like today we lost our camera you know from yesterday to today we gained a camera and then from yesterday to today we lost a camera now the lord give it the lord take it away <laughs> blessed be the name of the lord <laughs> so what can we say well yesterday when i was using my orbit sphere on this particular laptop I would always have the laptop inside the house and I would have the orbit sphere outside with a long cable. Well, today, my computer didn't recognize the cable. It says, no, that ain't working right. Really? Now, yesterday, when they were doing the power, they turned off the power, so I had my, my big massive computer shut down and it's kind of like a server, it's so big, you know, but anyways, it was shut down, so I picked up the laptop, my wife's laptop, and I started working on it and thinking around with it and I fixed the camera and audio on the laptop. I'm a retired network engineer, you know, I've worked in network engineering field. I went to school for it at Charter Learning, Charter, Charter Computer Center, Charter Computer Center in Anaheim anyway. But the point is, is that I, I know how to fix things and, you know, usually you give me time and I'll get it fixed or, you know, I'll set up a network or I'll run a network or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, I don't stay in that industry anymore, you know, it was kind of like a geek thing, you know, and I got out of that for a while, and then I got back into it, then I got out of it permanently. <laughs> it's like, man, you know, you get tired of doing some of these things, so you change your vocation, <laughs> you know, wherever you happen to be sent by the Lord. And so, having worked in computers and having 
set up networks like at Shoalwater Bay Casino and you know doing all these different jobs like with Toshiba. And you learn these things along the way how to do certain things. So yeah, I knew that eventually you know I'd fix the computer and I'd fix the camera that was on it that was installed. You know, one of those little tiny, you know, kind of like the top cameras. You know, I knew the audio was off and that it was just a software issue. It wasn't a hardware issue. Same thing like with this issue today. I can't get what I want to get going with my orbit sphere because of a software issue. I'm sure of that. That's not a problem. It's probably related to a Microsoft update or maybe a conflict with, you know, virus protection. But while it caused me to maybe not catch the exact moment that the sun rose, hey, guess what? If you look over here, the sun's rising. You can see the light off of my hand and it's bright and the rays are shining through, kind of like what we want to do. And knowing that I'm getting a hardware upgrade this week, God is kind of like preparing me, it seems like, to be adaptable more so than I already am. I mean, to be honest with you, when something goes wrong, I just move on to something else. You know, it's like, okay, right now I'm rendering um, one of the series that uh, we do every day, or, or we do every day on Tuesday, which is, do you see, do you hear, do you know? You know, there are three different uh, videos that are devotionals that pretty much we put them out for people to be inspired to, do you see what I see? Or do you hear what I hear? Or, hey, do you know what I know? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of invoking, as it were, a response from the person watching to think about these things. Think about, you know, your relationship with God. Think about what God might be showing you or teaching you or you're learning from Him personally. You see, it's never about simply getting stuck in a rut, like as though every day we're the same. No, they're not. As a matter of fact, every day is unique and distinctive and different than the day before. Changes happen every day. Changes are happening to your body. Changes are happening in life. The world is wearing down. Creation is groaning in travail, waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Jesus is coming sooner than you think. I mean, things are happening. Now, you can either ignore them or you can employ them in your life. You could be a part of what's happening in the world. You could be a part of what's happening in the kingdom of God. Or you could ignore it and just go about your day. Go your way, your will, and spend it the way you want to. I like to be a part of what's happening with God. Oh, you know, kind of like you hear the birds singing in the morning, you go, what's up with that? They like it. <laughs> they like morning. I'm kind of like one of those kind of people. I like to sing in the morning. Ooh, turtle dove, cooing. Ooh, what's up with that? Why do they do that? What's what's different about these birds? Why why do they sing? You know, why do, why are they participating in this kind of uh, joyful melody in the morning? I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. So I do investigate these things. I think about these things. I talk to God about these things. I go, Lord, what's up with the sun? I mean, hey, why do you make the sun to shine every day? What's up with the clouds? Why is there vapor? You know, why does the vapor work in such a way to cause the clouds to come and that you said you would come again and leave in the same way that you came? Or why in the morning do I see this bright, shiny morning star and I think, oh God, there you are and it's so close and it's so soon that you're coming again. Do other people know that? Anyone looking at the morning star? Anyone been out in the morning lately? <laughs> do you look up? Do you look down? Do you look all around? <laughs> you know, I'm going to jump down, turn around, touch the ground, praise my Lord. Do, 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 do. Amen. I mean, that's what we used to sing in the Jesus movement, and we were looking for Jesus' return every day. Now, me, I happen to know prophecy, so I'm looking a little more acutely than you are. <laughs> I believe you know what I'm talking about. You may not know the day or the hour, but guess what? That could apply to just some place in the earth. That could apply to your day of death. That could apply to a lot of things. There's even a feast day that's called No Man Knoweth the Day or the Hour, which is kind of an interesting name, you think? <laughs> But rather than tell you tomorrow Jesus is coming, you know, which it won't, you know, you know um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen in 2014. Although a uh, day of the rapture could be like any day that you die because you're raptured out of your body, so to speak, to be with the Lord. 
your spirit goes to be, you know, with him because we ask him for the body to be present with the Lord. So, yeah, you know, if you drop dead, well, hey, praise the Lord. Guess what? You know where you went. Or do you? <laughs> you better. Uh-oh. Get ready. But, no, I mean, it's, you know, you got less than five years. You know, that's pretty, pretty common. Yeah, pretty much everybody knows that, or they're learning that, maybe, and maybe some don't know. Maybe the millennials are just going to, you know, skip into the Great Tribulation and decide to play with that kind of, um, what do we call that, presentation of God revealing himself. <laughs> wow. Wake up call. But, you know, if you're ready beforehand and you prepared yourself, you know, and you kind of look at the day and you kind of said, God, you know, whatever happens, I just trust you and I pray that you would take me home and be with you when it's time. Then you just begin to realize you're clinging less and less to the things of the world and you're involving yourself more and more in the things of God's kingdom as opposed to the worldly kingdom. Now, I've met a lot of pastors recently that are getting really involved in politics. I've met a lot of Calvary Chapel pastors recently that are getting way involved in the world man they're really into you know like social causes they're really into you know like developing their church you know they're really into their ministry i don't hear them talk about jesus much but okay you know if they don't have a relationship with jesus what can you say hey it's their choice but what you and i do is up to us how we relate to the day is the way we choose to live our lives according to god's way and not necessarily our way. And that's what I wanted to bring out to you, is that it's not about you, and it's not about me, but in some ways it is. So if you're kind of like selfish in one way, that you really want to save yourself, well, I think you better get into a relationship with Jesus, because <laughs> he's coming soon, and he's gonna check you out. Yeah, he's gonna check out what you've been doing with your time. Time management, hello. It's not just a question of you getting a job and providing for your family. Sorry, even the Gentiles do that, or the heathen, if you want to call them that. But there's a little more to life than just meeting the bills or going about the business of religion or being, uh, well, you know, hey, I teach on Sunday, so you know what? I've done my religious part. Uh, it's a daily thing, dude. You know, I mean, you got to get real with it sooner or later. And so when we look at the things that happen in our life, like today when the camera didn't work out the way I wanted it to, do I go, oh, gee, gee, and blah, 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 you know, and act like a little chihuahua dog, go, no, of course not. I just go, well, praise the Lord, and I move on to this camera. Do I, when people are attacking me or saying something bad about me, you know, come back at them, you know, barking and biting, you know, same chihuahua, you know, chewing on them. When the government says something, do I go, you know, like a little chihuahua. Am I always barking, in other words? Most of the time I've been finding, there's a lot of pastors out there doing a lot of barking. They ain't doing a lot of teaching. They're not doing a lot of preaching. They're not doing a lot of help. As a matter of fact, I have to take them sometimes off of my sight because they're so bad at what they should be doing about good news. They only got bad news. You ever heard of a bad news pastor? <laughs> There's a lot of them out there right now. Yeah, they're out there kind of telling you what's wrong with this, that, and the other thing, and they don't really tell you what's right, you know, or what to do about it. They just go, oh, look what the government did. Oh, look at Benghazi. Oh, look at uh, the president. Oh, look at the Congress. Oh, look at, you know, can I ask him a question? Have you ever looked at Jesus? <laughs> he looks pretty good to me. You ever looked at a sunrise and said, hey God, show me. Looks pretty good to me. Have you ever looked at what God is doing and said, hey, man, it, it's awesome, man. Have you, have you ever, have you seen what God is doing in my life lately? Man, today, I, man, it was like so exciting. God blessed me by having my camera go out so that I could use my other camera so that I could get even better quality, better pictures, better sound, and woohoo, I'm able to take it on the road again so that I could get back out on the streets and teach and preach and share the good news that Jesus is coming again soon. Oh, I'm sorry. You're too busy arguing politics. 
that's right there's an election year coming oh hmm I'm sure Jesus is really interested in that one hmm yeah think I don't mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other a just God and a Savior the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake he will magnify the law and he will make it honorable God was in Jesus reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and that he might be the justifier of him that believes in Jesus he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect it is God that justifies to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness you know it's kind of interesting there that to him that worketh not you know there's this whole thing about O'Reilly and news and people saying entitlements or saying this that or the other thing you know using certain buzzwords to try to create you animosity against those that they aren't working or they are doing their part they 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 me 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 I I I we 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 they 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 it's always them and not me well I didn't do it I'm working you know I got a job man and they're taking my money you know I want more my money what if it was the Lord's job what if it was the Lord's money what if it was the Lord's timing? What if it was the Lord's day that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it? What if it's not about you, but it is about him? What if God could take your life and turn it inside out and make it worthwhile so that his righteousness, his mercy, his goodness, his grace, his power to forgive, his power to change lives, his ability to save souls would be what we're all about not us but him maybe we might have a different perspective on the day